beloved brethren and sisters, again we meet in a glorious conference. In the sessions of this impressive conference, we've had exhortation, instruction, and warning. The sermons were each mighty and sobering. We were instructed quite fully in the ways of the Lord. Very prominent in the sermons were words like this, walk uprightly, keep my commandments, live my laws. We were reminded about marriage, proper marriage, about repentance and forgiveness, about building self-esteem, and walking in the ways of righteousness. We've heard of the troubled sea, and the wickedness that is never happiness. A story is written by Roy H. Stetler, publisher of a religious journal in the East. It occurred outside the Crimean castle of Levadia. The castle was, a, was aglow with lights. A soldier was pacing in carefully measured steps back and forth, guarding the castle, which, at the moment, housed within it, its walls, the most momentous conference of world men. The soldier appeared proud of his task, for what soldier would not like to tell his children and his grandchildren that he had once done guard duty for the momentous meeting of the big three? <clears throat> Suddenly out of the darkness like a phantom, a figure appeared on the path that led to the entrance of the castle. As the figure approached, the guard commanded, Halt! Who goes there? Come hither and make yourself known. And with that, the guard quickly took his gun from his shoulder and poised it for any emergency. The stranger spoke, I wish to meet with the men who are in the castle. Preposterous, exclaimed the guard. You cannot enter the castle. Do you not know that the big three are meeting to decide the course of the world. No one is permitted to enter. The man replied, you say it is the big three? Why are they called the big three? Well, they are they, said the guard, who shall say how this world shall be ruled. The stranger looked intensely at the guard. His eyes flashed as he said, well, that's uh, why I must be with them, because I can help them. I have a plan, a plan that will really work and will keep the peace of the world if they'll only adopt my plan. The soldier laughed, go on your way, man. You have no credentials. The man replied, credentials, perhaps not. Here, and he raised his hand in salute as he left. The guard saw an ugly scar in his hand. Then he looked at the other hand, and it too had a scar. You were in battle, he asked, a little more gently. I see wounds in your hands. The stranger turned again. No, I did not think you would notice, he replied. No, I did not receive these wounds in battle. With that, he disappeared suddenly as if the darkness had enveloped him. The guard looked after him and marveled. I should have known, he exclaimed, if I'd only let him in. And he slumped to the ground in dismay. This is he who brought blessings to all the inhabitants of the earth. This personage was he who spoke. Those who would ask the stranger this question, what are these wounds in thine hands and thy feet? Then shall they know that I am the Lord, for I will say unto them, These wounds are the wounds with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. I am he who is lifted up. I am Jesus who was crucified. I am the Son of God. And remembering that life is a time of rewards and punishments, may we consider the positive side today for a while, the rewards which come from him for obedience. Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, 
and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him, and two others, James and John, sons of Zebedee, followed him. And the two sets of brothers became apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I assure you that that is one of the greatest blessings of all blessings that can come to any man an honor too. Today, October 7th, is my birthday. It's exactly 30 years ago today, almost to the hour, when I knelt at the feet of President Heber J. Grant and was ordained an apostle of Jesus Christ. In the seventh revelation called the vision, blessings were promised, that by keeping the commandments they might be washed and cleansed from all sin and receive the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands of him who is ordained and sealed unto this power, and who overcome by faith are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which the Father sheds upon all those who are just and true. They are they who are the church of the firstborn. They are they into whose hands the Father has given all things. They are they who are priests and kings and who have received of his fullness and of his glory and are priests of the Most High after the order of Melchizedek, which is after the order of Enoch, which is after the order of the only begotten Son. Wherefore, as it is written, they are gods, even the sons of God. Wherefore, all things are theirs, whether life or death or things present or things to come, all are theirs, and they are Christ's, and Christ is God's. And they shall overcome all things. These shall dwell in the presence of God and his Christ forever and ever. These are they who shall come forth in the resurrection of the just. These are they who are just men, made perfect through Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, who wrought out this perfect atonement through the shedding of his own blood. Jesus went about Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing their ill. There followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee and other places, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And his disciples came, and he opened his mouth and taught them, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. It seems that Jesus' heart was always filled with blessings. And this, as the prophet Joseph records, we saw the glory of the celestial, which excels in all things, where God, even the Father, reigns upon his throne forever and ever, before whose throne all things bow in humble reverence and give him glory forever and ever. And the glory of the celestial is, the one, is one, even as the glory of the sun is one. And again, but great and marvelous are the works of the Lord and the mysteries of the kingdom which he showed unto us, which surpass all understanding in glory and in might and in dominion. Neither is man capable to make them known, for they are only to be seen and understood by the power of the Holy Spirit, which God bestows on those who love him and purify themselves before him to whom he grants this privilege of seeing and knowing for themselves. The Revela Revelation of 1832, known as the Vision, begins thusly, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, 
O earth, and rejoice, ye inhabitants thereof. For the Lord is God, and beside him there is no Savior. Great is his wisdom, marvelous are his ways, and the extent of his doings none can find out. His purposes fail not, neither there are there any that can stay his hand. For thus saith the Lord, I, the Lord, am merciful and gracious unto those who fear me and delight to honor those who serve me in righteousness and in truth unto the end. Great shall be their reward, and eternal shall be their glory. And when he gives a blessing, he fulfills it. And when he makes a promise, it is certain to come to pass. In 1831, he said, what I, the Lord, have spoken, I have spoken, and I excuse not myself. And though the heavens and the earth pass away, my word shall not pass away, but shall all be fulfilled, whether by mine own voice or by the voice of my servant, it is the same. As the Lord began to prepare his apostles for his crucifixion, he said to them, He that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Certainly nothing is impossible with the Lord. His promises are fulfilled. In the 1833, the Lord made promises which we should never take lightly. He said the destroying angel will pass by you and not slay you bringing back our memory of the days of Egypt. They shall have good health, he said, and strength and power with marrow in their bones and health in their navel, and perhaps even greater promise than those, and shall find wisdom and great treasures of knowledge, even hidden treasures. All these blessings to all of us who remember the sayings and walk in obedience. If you love me, keep my commandments, he told his people constantly. There are depths in the sea which the storms that lash the surface into fury never reach. They who reach down into the depths of life, where in the stillness the voice of God is heard, have the stabilizing power which carries them poised and serene through the hurricane of difficulties. There are so many beautiful promises to read the scriptures and turn pages, and it seems that it is almost all rewards, evidence of living the commandments of the Lord. He said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. And then in our own dispensation comes the great reward. For all who will have a blessing at my hands shall abide the law which has been appointed for that blessing. And then he speaks of the blessings of eternity. They shall pass by the angels and the gods that are set there, they who keep the commandments and live worthily, to their exaltation and glory in all things has been sealed upon their heads, which glory shall be a fullness and a continuation of the seeds forever and ever. They shall be gods because they have no end. They shall be gods because they have all power and the angels are subject unto them. If ye receive me in this world, then shall ye know me, the Lord said, and shall receive your exaltation that where I am ye shall be also. And as he approached the end with his beloved apostles surrounding him, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. All this, what more could be desired or asked? 
all these blessings and numerous others to every one of us who is willing to live the commandments and be truthful and honorable in our dealings. I bear witness that God has given us conditionally all these and thousands of other good things. He's organized his true church upon the earth. This is his church. He's given us the total program which will carry us forward toward perfection. And he's given us prophets to lead and guide us. And President Harold B. Lee today is the leader of this kingdom. This people, and of, he is a prophet of God. This I know. This I know. To this I bear solemn witness, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.